What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I break down the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta, and I give the good, the bad, the ugly, and my final verdict. What did I like? What didn't I like? And what should be fixed by the time the game releases this fall? This is Marsman Gaming. Let's start off with the good. The maps in this game I thought were pretty well done. I didn't really have anything negative to say about any of them. In the maps that they showed off for this beta, they have six in total. Four of them are going to be 6v6 maps, and two of them would be ground war maps. For the most part, they were pretty well rounded. I thought that they had some pretty good locations to flank around your opponents, as well as some places that were good for camping, as well as those that just were good for mayhem. So I think all around, it had multiple ways of attack, and that means it's a pretty solid level. It was definitely a breath of fresh air compared to games like Call of Duty Vanguard as well as Call of Duty Cold War. The biggest criticisms that most Call of Duty games have had in the past few years was that most of the maps were three lane in how it's designed. But for the most part, these maps actually seem pretty well developed to the point where there's multiple ways you can go and it doesn't seem like you're going to be funneled into one of three directions where you can get mowed down by your opponents. Having multiple different directions where you can attack from and go about means that this map has so much more replayability and now you can strategize in which how you want to go about every single round. The ground war maps are also very well organized and I thought that they did a great job where it wasn't too open in how it's designed. For example, when you play Battlefield games, especially Battlefield 2042, there's going to be times where you're sprinting or you're jogging for a long period of time with zero cover and all of a sudden anyone that's posting up on a, on a rooftop with a sniper rifle can take out anybody. But it feels like in these maps for ground war that they did a very good job at trying to make sure that there's always some sort of cover around you so it's not going to be a snipe city where everybody has a sniper and they're just posting up. These maps made it seem like it was an urban warfare, more of a modern style take on combat versus the grand landscapes or grand open areas that the old Call of Duty games were like, or even what we see in Battlefield games nowadays. The other thing I really liked were the modes. Call of Duty was always known for having a lot of varying types of game modes for players to play. And Infantry War, I think, did a smart move. Instead of just giving us the standard domination, team deathmatch, search and destroy on this beta, they kind of gave us a plethora of new modes that they were testing out to see how people liked them. Prison Rescue basically being a variant of the cyber attack from the last Modern Warfare game, having it where one side is trying to save the hostages while the other ones are trying to defend them. I thought this was a very well-made mode. I enjoyed it. I think I played this mode more than any of the other ones. We have Knockout, which was a mixture between CTF and other objective-based modes that basically had it where if you're not necessarily a fan of having one life like it is in Search and Destroy, you can be revived, and this allows you to kind of have another chance at life, and I think this is actually a really good mode for people that want to try to test out these objective style of play, but also not just be bored if you get killed right away. Well, my opinion is the most interesting of all of these modes, I think has to be the third person mosh pit. Now, this is technically going to be a callback to the old mode from the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 back in the day, but this does kind of open up the floodgates for people who are fans of third-person shooter games that want to try to test out how is it like here. And I think that Infantry Ward was really trying to test the waters. I think they want people from Fortnite as well as others from like Battlefront days that really like to play in third-person mode and are want people to test it out and see, hey, yeah, we have the ability to do third-person here. I think this is a smart move from Infantry Ward. I having to kind of create varying types of ways to play. I think that's going to be the key thing you notice in a lot of these multiplayer maps and modes is that it opens up what the player choice is. You can do more things in the methods in which you play. But at the same time, I'm going to say this now, there will be issues later on in the video that we will discuss where they kind of limit player choice. Next, let's talk about the movements. I think overall the movements were pretty solid. I think that they were basically trying to continue what they had found as a hidden gem with Modern Warfare 2019 and had it where it was more modern take of combat, but you also had some methods where you could really fly in the map. You could move fast, you could then do ultra sprint to try to get into cover, and I thought this was a really good thing to continue because I enjoyed the way that that game felt, and this one kind of just was an expansion or an updated version of that. If it's not broken, then don't change it. I think some movement changes that they did added were going to be the cancellation of slide, which I think was a smart move on their part. A lot of people were looking forward to stopping that from happening. Secondly, I think the addition of the, or the, really the return of super dives or swan dives was obviously a cool thing. I mean, you're gonna get some really cool moments where you're 
you're diving in the air and, and doing some crazy stuff. But I think the way that they implemented this dive compared to the older games like in Black Ops, I think this one's not necessarily about making some action-packed diving shooting move. It's more about just diving into cover when you're really close of getting away. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. Firstly, weapon balancing is completely off in this game. When I'm looking at the weapons in general, LMGs are lasers. We have SMGs that are basically just dominant. They are most powerful and accurate weapons of all of them. The M4 is pretty good, but it also could be inconsistent at times. And I think the biggest crime to this date is what they did to my favorite gun, the M16. The M16 basically is a non-important weapon in this game and it's kind of sickening. The M16 used to be one of the most legendary weapons in all of Call of Duty. It was the burst shot rifle. I thought it was super accurate back in the day and I get it. It was a little rigged or broken in some cases, but what they did to it in this game is just unfathomable. I, I think that they made this gun to be super inaccurate where the first shot is going to be one that hits the guy and other two are going to be erratically placed and when you make this gun extremely weak that means you have to really find a way to accurately hit the guy three times twice and that's just impossible the way that this gun is formatted and the recoil control is outrageous the basic issue that this beta has right now is that the recoil control compared to the strength of the weapon is completely off. And I understand that Infantry Ward is going to make updates and balancing tweaks by the time this game comes out. I would hope that they do that. But at the same time, the, the concepts of what they're doing aren't necessarily beneficial for us right now playing the game. I think the key thing that I noticed between all weapons and how they balance them in these games is that if a gun is extremely powerful and it takes less shots to kill a person, then the recoil is going to be out of control. And that's that's generally normal. Then on the other hand, if a gun is weaker, and you need more shots to hit somebody then the recoil is not going to be out of control. And it seems like a lot of these weapons that they have in this game are just the opposite. It feels like those weapons that only need a few shots to kill an opponent or the perfect recoil. Then you have those that are needed more bullets to kill somebody are completely erratic in the way it's aiming. So I feel like they need to really think about how they want to organize these weapons and how they want the stats to kind of correlate with them. Next thing I want to talk about is the progression system. Now, generally, I'm not necessarily talking about progression when it comes to leveling up because that one's pretty basic. You're using XP for matches. You're leveling up from there. The issue I have is the weapon progression. I don't really like the concept that they added where you're going to be using different families of weapons that are going to change up the progression that if you have to, in order for you to unlock the m16 you got to use the icarus lmg and i'm thinking to myself why the hell would you ever do this why why would you ever try to use this method to unlock weapons where it used to work forever the basic concept of you leveling up your main character you unlock weapons and then then you can unlock weapon level ups that could then just give you attachments and things like that. That was the basic idea that was in Call of Duty for generations. So then when this beta releases, then they give you this weapon progression system where I need to upgrade weapons to a certain level for me to get new guns. I think it's dumb. I think at the end of the day, like I want to just play the guns I want. If I unlock a gun based on me sweating and get a higher level, then let me use that gun. Instead, you're forcing me to have to use weapons I probably would never use. Never. As much as I know people love LMGs, and trust me, I think LMGs are, are solid guns, but I never use LMGs online. I, I never do it, me personally. So you're telling me I'm trying to get to the M16, and before I even realize it was hot trash, I have to use the Icarus LMG. Okay, fine. I'll use it. But you're you're just creating a detriment to my play. I had a limited amount of time to play this beta and now you're forcing me to play a gun I don't want to use, right? I think that's kind of a really dumb idea, to be honest. I think the reasons why they're trying to have you do this is poor for you. I think they want to basically have you test out a bunch of other guns that not a lot of people want to test out. I think they want to lower the amount of things you unlock because you're, they're forcing you to stick to certain guns first and then you can get to something else because people used to just un max out the weapons in a in matter of no time basically back in the old cod and i think that at the end of the day i think this is just like they're they're trying to update systems that don't need to be updated so all those reasons combined i just think this is a bad idea i think you can easily fix this you can change this to be more back to the old method but i really don't think if it's rewards going to change this i think they're going to keep this system in place next thing i want to talk about is the overall glitches of the game smaller issues like movement mechanics or basically you know the look of guns being in different directions that's not necessarily the worst thing. I mean, granted, I know this is a beta, so it's going to be time for them to test this out 
and see what they have to adjust from here. This game showed me that there were many problems right from the start, and I honestly was getting a little concerned because generally, when you see a little, a few glitches, that's not the worst case. Like you're gonna see that in a game, in the, especially in the very beginning. But when you see the amount of different glitches or different problems that they have with the beta so far, it kind of gets you that. And I think Ackman said it best. It gives you that PTSD from the Battlefield 2042 beta. I I really don't want to see this game become another Battlefield 2042. I I really don't. Like for example, when you're seeing death cams and that 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 bar that's outside their cam is constantly flashing. It just makes me feel like not only do I have to watch my horrible play that I just had and got killed, but now I'm I'm getting brain damaged by looking at the kill cam and this flashing light is constantly hitting me in the face. There are times where body parts were contorting all over the place, where arms were in wrong directions, guns were inside people's bodies. I mean, it was getting a little outrageous. I think I saw, if you're watching other videos, that other YouTubers were talking about how basically you were prone embedded into a car like it was it was outrageous but at the same time it's like i get it these these are glitches that are having issues in, in in a beta the amount of different ones scares if i was a pc gamer i would be really surprised because of the fact that on pc i saw these more often than on console the fear is is that if these glitches aren't fixed by the release date then people are not going to be really sure how they feel about this game because remember battlefield 2042 a lot of people saw the same types of glitches with the, the lighting being off, the, the issues of the bodies contorting, and a lot of people were saying that they should that they should delay Battlefield 2042 to the following year. I don't know what's going to happen with Call of Duty. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I am, I am definitely concerned to see these amounts of glitches, and I really hope Call of Duty can just fix these up, pass these up, and then we'll be all golden. One of the scariest glitches I saw was that basically the servers themselves were technically broken. I was playing with Kevin Kulex and even the Act Man, and both times we had difficulties connecting to basically anybody. With the bad, we have to talk about the ugly. The worst thing I've seen from this beta was the combination of the UI and trying to play with friends. Let's start with the UI. To be honest, this was one of the worst UIs I think I've ever seen in my life of game. I thought that Halo 5's was pretty gross, as well as a few others where, you know, I mean, you can rag on Halo Infinite for having not the greatest UI, but boy, does Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's UI Put them all to shame. I physically can't comprehend how is it possible that this UI can be as bad as it is. I thought that Halo 5 had a gross UI. I thought that Halo Infinite had a gross UI. And as well as a bunch of other games had bad UIs over the years. But this has won the award for being the worst UI in the history of gaming. If anyone's wondering, the basic concept of a UI is to help the person or the user navigate through the menus in a well-organized way so it really decreases the stress of finding where you want to go and what you want to play. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's UI basically makes it even more difficult for you to navigate the menu and even to be less stressed than before. As in, I feel more stressed navigating this UI than actually playing the game. There were times I was trying to play it with my friends and family and just getting to find where they are and invite them to a match was completely like impossible i basically had to go through the xbox menu invite them personally through there in order for them to join a match and it wasn't even that i was out streaming the game and i went to go play with kevin collects and the act man and they both said this is nearly impossible to find people and play with them because this concept of them using the activision id and then trying to embed that in the menu it was just out of control and it was just bad i can't believe people are drifting so far away from drop that menus i mean like they're the simplest things possible to make a ui organized and i'm not just saying this as a call of duty issue this is like a gaming industry thing i think this horizontal ui set that they come out with as a new trend is honestly just bad it just looks unorganized it looks like it's just too long too too annoying to navigate and they need to think of a better way to do this. So overall, I think that there are positives and negatives for this beta. I think Call of Duty has been in a really tough spot for a few years now. Like if you really look back at like the, the past decade of Call of Duty games, for the most part, around maybe half of them are, are good. And then the other half are just atrocious. And maybe I'm being a little too generous here. And I'm talking about the last 10 years. And I think that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has to land 
for Activision because I think that Modern Warfare of the last few years was probably the best Call of Duty or the one that I played the most. Now, granted, I get it. The Call of Duty fans may not be the super hyped for Modern Warfare because of the fact that it was more about realism. And I know that may, they may not set a lot of Call of Duty fans in the right mindset. But I think that this beta has some things to look forward to, but also has a lot of things that needs to be fixed. I think that the movements, the sound design, the atmosphere, and the modes and in, in maps are all great. I think that they all per, were pretty solid. And I was surprised to see that the maps and modes especially were going to be as good as they were at the same time i'm also going to say that there's going to be negatives in things like the weapon balancing and the visual glitches and other glitches that kind of just crash pcs as well as the progression system that kind of needs a lot of tweaking to get right obviously the biggest thing in my in my opinion is the ui it needs to be fixed I mean, if you can fix the UI, I think that's going to make things easier for people to, to at least navigate the menus. Weapon balancing is going to be a pretty straightforward fix. You just have to tweak some settings that probably make that good. The progression system, I feel like, is not going to be a thing that gets changed because of the fact that it looks like they are trying to keep this as a family tree. So they have less work, I guess you would say. Less work in their eyes to not add attachments for every gun, so they're gonna have a family tree of attachments. And I think that is not the smartest move for their part, but I'm not going to you know, say that's the worst thing here. But the key thing, in my opinion, is that Modern Warfare needs to land. I think that they have had a really bad look with Vanguard. Call of Duty Cold War was a decent game, but remember in the very beginning how glitched out that was where the campaign didn't even work? And I think that overall, this is just a multiplayer outlook right now. I think the multiplayer is going to be solid. It just needs to fix the little things to keep it going. I think the campaign is probably going to be very good because Call of Duty for the most part have, uh, has had pretty solid campaigns except for Vanguard. I think this game is going to be okay. It just needs to kind of fix the little things and we're good. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Please, if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And please join us on social media, on Discord, and on Twitter, and that is located in the description below. If you want to join us on Patreon to help support the channel, you can also do that, and that is located in the description below as well. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace.